Hello, everyone, and welcome back for another session with RBC. Uh, my name is Sonia Siddiqui, and joining us today again is Alicia Mohammed, um, who's a business account manager at RBC. Alicia, do you want to say hello quickly? Hi, guys. Uh, nice to be here, and um, I look forward to our chat today. Thank you. And um, she's going to be talking about exploring exciting opportunities in RBC commercial and small business banking. Thank you very much, Sonia. I appreciate that. Guys, I am so excited to be here with you again to share on uh, uh, the business account manager role here at RBC and um, the opportunities that we have. Um, so we will go into some discussion around uh, you know, how to get into a role such as this, um, opportunities to move forward within the organization as well and um, just some in-depth um, knowledge for you guys on, on what your role itself entails. Uh, so as you can see again on your screens, just a little bit of information on myself. Um, again, I am very much um, passionate about what it is I do. So you can see my RBC. I have RBC tattoos on my arms sometimes when I'm going to different events and so forth because I'm very passionate about promoting um, the business account manager role and so forth. So I, I came to Canada in 2006. I did come as an international student uh, to Canada. Uh, I went to York University and did my undergrad and my master's there. And um, when I was done, actually in 2012, RBC was the first company that I was hired with. So I have been with them for six years and uh, I have been in four different roles um, with them. Current role is business account manager for healthcare. Uh, overseeing Brampton markets here in Canada and um, I do believe again in being the change that you wish to see in the world. So moving on, um, that's again just a, a little bit of information about myself. Um, as we get into our, our segment, so RBC business markets at the bottom here, uh, these are the values that we truly live by. Uh, we have client first, we're about collaboration, accountability, diversity and inclusion and integrity. Uh, and just to briefly, you know, go a little bit more in depth in terms of what we mean by these values for us. Um, our goal with any market is always to put our clients first. So we're about seeking their best interests, giving them the best advice we can to help them make a better decision financially for their lives. Uh, when it comes to collaboration, uh, it is a big aspect of our organization and we truly believe in teamwork from all spectrums. If we are to help our clients truly succeed in life, it will come through partnering and partnering for us means internally within our organization um, and specifically within a business account manager role, it will also be externally that, uh, that you will be partnering. Um, accountability for us is about taking ownership uh, pers for personal and collective high performance. So we are an organization that is dedicated to continuous learning. Uh, we're always about enhancing skill sets and uh, looking forward for progression within our careers and so forth. Uh, diversity and inclusion, uh, as you guys probably know already or, or may not be aware of, uh, RBC lives diversity. We embrace this for innovation and growth. We speak up for inclusion and empower people to grow and achieve more. We believe truly in seeking out um, and respecting also different perspectives. Uh, in terms of integrity, we do hold ourselves to the highest standards to build trust. Uh, we build trust of clients, colleagues, and community partners. Uh, by listening and understanding, listening to and understanding their, their needs and the interests that they would have. Uh, and we are respectful, transparent, and fair in all of our, our, all of our relationships. These are the core values uh, that we live and breed within the organization. And I think each of us as employees, this is what we, we look to as our, as our North Star, if, if, you, if, you, if you may. Uh, of how we, we look to do business within our communities. Um, in our next slide, we would go more a little bit into what our role is as a business account manager. So 
Our role, as you can tell, is to assist self-employed entrepreneurs by providing advice on how to grow and manage both their business and personal banking. Our goal is to introduce clients to partners that can help provide specialized advice in different areas. Um, so that would be our partners such as payroll services, financial planners, group planning within, within the banks, wealth planning, and so forth. And as well to build relationships within your within your local community so specifically as a business account manager and we'll probably stay on this slide for a bit as a business account manager you're going to typically manage a desk of about 250 to 300 clients in terms of our lending and what we do we finance deals up to 750,000 most times anything that's above 750,000 in lending would be on our commercial platform. So roles for commercial account managers, you would start doing lending uh, for above 750,000. As a business account manager, we promote four main products to clients. So there are the term loans that we assist with. There is a credit line that's needed for the business. There is overdraft. And then there is your visa facilities. So what, what we really do is that we would take care of any financing needs a client may have. So a client that's looking to open their own business, a client that's looking to purchase over an existing business, they need financing for equipment, for renovations, leasing, and so forth. Uh, we finance these through term loans for clients. Uh, in addition to that, the operating line that we provide uh, is to help with their cash flow within the business. And the business visa is to help them separate their business expenses from their personal. So business visas, obviously, they would use more for, for smaller purchases that they're doing. As a business account manager, your goal would be to acquire new business to RBC whilst continuing to grow your current portfolio on your desk. So typically... A business account manager will be assigned to a specific market and within that market you would have about two to three branches that you will work with to manage clients on your desk and acquire new relationships personality and having the right personality is going to be key for a business account manager role uh, you're required, again, not only to build internal relationships. So, again, that will be partnering with your branches. Within our branches, you will work closely with your banking advisors, your financial advisors, your mortgage specialists, financial planners, um, wealth management, and so forth. Uh, but externally as well in this role, you're going to work with a lot of key partners on the outside. So your key partners in a business account manager role would be um, your accountants, your lawyers, um, your leasing agents, real estate agents, and so forth. So within your market, you will want to partner with other organizations. So you're going to look now to partner with um, within a city, let's say. So you're in Toronto, building relationships and establishing relationships with City of Toronto. Uh, if you're in Brampton, you're going to be partnering with City of Brampton. You're going to look for a board of trade organizations to connect yourselves with. Because at the end of the day, as a business account manager, uh, your role is to also network and establish relationships within your community. Because this is how you're going to acquire um, and attract new clients and new business to RBC. Uh, as a business account manager, you're going to be doing a lot of events as well. So sometimes it's going to be advice events that you host yourself with other partners. Um, and then other times it's going to be looking for larger events to go to. So if you're looking to finance or, or help clients um, with franchise opportunities um, within Canada itself, there are always um, franchising events that come around that are hosted yearly. Uh, within the healthcare space as well, there's always um, events catered to optometrists, dentists, uh, radiologists, and so forth. So with every industry, there are always different types of events that you would want to try to connect yourself with in order to, one, get your name out there and also try to get new business for yourself, right? Um, with 
it's not a typical nine to five job. I, I can tell you guys that from now. Uh, you are mobile as a manager. However, to be successful in your role, um, it may require different work schedules. For myself now, I have been a business account manager for just a little under a year. And I can tell you so far in my role, uh, it's definitely not a typical nine to five. Um, you're going to be working uh, your own hours. You do control your schedules and, and you control that to the best of your ability and, and how you want to grow your business within your market as well as your portfolio. So sometimes it may mean seeing a client on a Saturday or, or perhaps seeing them on a Sunday. It may mean working 12 to 8 one day because you need to go see a client after work. A lot of what we do to and how we meet clients would be through um, not only through the branches, but but going to their clinics and meeting them there or, or perhaps taking a client out for, for coffee to get to know them and, and do deeper discovery in terms of what it is they're looking for and the advice that we could provide to them. So it's not a typical nine to five um, again um, or Monday to Friday. Again, you can work it that way if you like. But for me personally, I think in order to be successful in it, uh, a business account manager role, it's a relationship manager role. And if you are treating this as your business and this is your passion to develop your community, um, it's going to just require you working all hours, just like how a business owner typically does. Um, so as a, as a business account manager, uh, most times when you are assigned as, a, as that, you may take over a desk from uh, from the previous manager or you may be considered what's called a desk builder. So within, within a desk builder role, it means you're gonna have zero clients and you're going to be starting from scratch. Uh, not the scariest thing in the world, definitely, to do. Uh, it's always fun to start building a desk from scratch because you're getting to build relationships and anchor people uh, and just be out in the communities looking for those opportunities. So, in terms of, um, we can actually move into our next slide. In terms of our small business life cycle, uh, and typically the clients that you would start attracting on your desk, it would be anywhere between those that are aspiring in their role to become entrepreneurs. So they're, they're looking at that potential or possibility of opening their business. You're meeting with them to give them the advice in terms of uh, what's needed, what we can provide um, at RBC for them, and, and build on your relationships from there. So sometimes with, with, your, with your progression with clients and prospects, it may take a while for, for you to close a deal, and, and that may be typical as well. Uh, sometimes it could be anywhere between three months to a year, depending, uh, where you would start off meeting with them, you're building that relationship, you're working with them, they are in the process of, of currently looking for a location or putting other things in place. So again, opening a business and, and a client, you know, moving into that or looking at a franchising opportunity, uh, because there are so many different aspects to that for a client, it's not something necessarily that may happen right away. So again, a client may come to you as a business account manager just to get that sense of, hey, I'm opening a business. How do I get things started and so forth? So as a, as a business account manager and as a BAM, I'll use for short, uh, your role again would be to provide them with that advice in terms of where to go and how to move and then how to get things started for themselves. Uh, you may also encounter clients that come to you right away and, and they already know what they want uh, and they would be considered a startup. So they found a location, they're looking at this practice uh, and they need now the financing for that. So a lot, of, a lot of your clients that you would meet uh, and tend to meet in terms of acquiring new relationships would be those clients that are brand new to business, they're now starting off for the first time, and you're going to hold that, their hand and walk them through that process. Again, you are considered a relationship manager to these clients. So on your desk, and as you, as you begin to acquire new clients on your desk, a lot of what you're going to do with them is we're not just about financing a deal for a client and waving our hands and wishing them the best of luck and success in their business and moving on. We're about continuing to work that relationship with them. So 
with your clients, meeting them sometimes on a quarterly basis, checking in to see what's going on within the business. Uh, is there need for uh, what's their cash flow like? Right. So even a, as a business account manager, you would have to have a good understanding of, of cash flow within the business, uh, understanding of financials and, and business statements and how to read these things, because you want to be able to provide them with the best advice at the end of the day. You want to help these clients make their business successful. Right. Because this is something, again, that you're passionate about. So. Once they become a startup and they're anchored to your desk, uh, again, they would go into to growth where they, within their first year, as they progress into their second and third year, they start generating, um, you know, growth and, and, and good revenues where you would then bring in additional partners and so forth to introduce them to. Once you reach to um, a maturity level with your clients, this is where the commercial account manager tends to come in and take over the relationship. So your goal as a business account manager is to acquire them, grow them, and once they grow to the point now where they're looking at opening a second and third location and so forth, and the financing needs become higher in terms of lending limits that's required for their business, you would then transfer them to a commercial account manager uh, who would take over that relationship from you. So. Within RBC, we're very big when it comes to partnering. So again, we, and as I mentioned before, your goal within your market would be to, per, uh, to partner with your commercial account managers as well, um, and then also look for opportunities for, for your clients. So whilst as a business account manager, you specifically focus just on the business financing needs that that client would have, the the role that you play in connecting with your branches that you're assigned to is continuing to look for those opportunities even on their personal side. So through your deeper discovery with your clients, you know, if it is that they're looking to buy, buy a home for the first time or they're looking to buy an investment property, uh, you find out that they have additional investments outside of RBC and so forth. This is where your partnering comes in. Uh, with your financial planners, retirement planners, and so forth, because you want to make sure that you're not just taking care of the business need and the immediate need for them, but making sure that they're taken care of from, again, all sides of it. So on the personal side, do they need credit facilities? Do they need a visa? You, at the end of the day, as a business account manager, wants to make sure that you become that main connector in that person or that client's life where they come to you and anything that they need, you can filter it through your network. So as you, as you grow in the role as a business account manager, you want to have those established relationships and you want to be able to form your own ecosystem within your community where you're connected to all your partners. So for example, myself as a business account manager overseeing healthcare in my market, anything my clients need, I, I facilitate for them. So they need, uh, again, a mortgage, they need a, a visa done on their personal side, I facilitate that through my internal teams. Again, that would be your, your banking advisors, financial advisors, mortgage specialists, and so forth. And then externally, whatever it is they need as well. So they're looking for, they need to get a business plan done for you in order for you to get the financing to them. You are going to refer them then to your accountants. They need signage done um, to replace within, within their business. You can connect them to such a person. Uh, they need leasing done or they're looking at other properties and they need a real estate agent to help with that process. That's where I facilitate and I become that main connector for my clients to ensure that we are making them successful in their business. At the end of the day, your goal is that you don't want them running around to five, 10 different people to find something out for themselves. As business owners, they're going to be crazy busy. They don't have a lot of time on their hands. So you want to make sure that you could maximize on the time that's spent with them. And the, the more you can do this with your clients, the more successful you will be as a business account manager, 
when you've built and established a relationship where they know that they can come to you for anything and you can help facilitate that process to them. Again, in the end stages of, of winding down, you'd see from the graph, this would be your clients that are on your desk that are looking at retiring and so forth. So again, when you when you have constant meetings with your clients and you're, you're connecting with them every quarter, six months to a year and so forth, and you're doing your discovery with them and you're finding out that yes, they are looking to retire within the next year, two years, or even it may be three years down the road. Uh, at that point as well, that's where your other partners come in. So within RBC and within the organization, our financial planners and our investment retirement planners uh, also specialize in what's called business owner planning and succession planning that can help these clients then transition over from retirement um, whether they want to sell their business and so forth and, and, and live on, on a certain amount, they help facilitate that process for us. So uh, on to our next slide. Business beyond banking. So again, as mentioned, we are an organization that's very big in, in terms of partnering and um, we work with a lot of external partners as well for clients as well as internally. Within the organization itself for our business clients in particular, we do work with uh, ADP, uh, which provides payroll solutions and, and HR services to our business clients. Uh, this is something we promote to a lot of our business clients again. Uh, most times when they are opening a business, they're going to have a certain number of staff, uh, whether it's between sometimes two to five to ten, depending on how large um, their business is. Uh, ADP is, is a fantastic partner that we work with and, and we promote as well. Uh, Monero solutions for us here would be uh, payment solutions. So, you know when you go to stores and you have that little debit machine and so forth that you use to pay for transactions? Um, that's what Moneris does to, for our customers. So it offers them that service to to their customers, uh, the ability to pay with uh, credit, debit, and so forth. So specifically at RBC, we partner with Moneris, and um, they, again, get in contact directly with our clients uh, to provide them with different solutions and options available. Uh, we work as well, as you can tell, uh, it's, it's meant for entrepreneurs, uh, startups and so forth. And um, it connects clients with flexible real estate um, lease arrangements um, that, again, foster innovations and creativity. In terms of how clients can access these services, uh, most of it is available uh, from our RBC online website. Wave as well is, is another one that we use. So WAVE helps clients in terms of managing their financials on, online for them. It's more or less like a virtual accountant that a client has, ha, will have access to. Um, it's connected to their online banking. So again, brand new startups or, or even clients that will be on your desk, um, it's something that we promote to them all the time where it would help them within the business understand their cash flow, understand their revenues, uh, and even show them forecasted net profits of where their business would expect it to be come year end. Uh, and this is a great tool to use with uh, your business clients because it also gives you insight in terms of do I need to do something more with my clients? Uh, is there a need then for an operating line based on what, um, what's being shown, is there cash flow in good standing, or again, do we need to facilitate an overdraft facility to help our clients out? Uh, a small business dashboard as well is, is another one that we use. So again, they have, our business owners has access to, um, it's a digital dashboard that they have access to, to get um, uh, insights into different sources to help them, again, make decisions faster. Uh, Shopify, we actually, this was supposed to be off my slide, unfortunately, we didn't get to take it off. It was a service that we had, unfortunately, it's not offered anymore, so I will not talk to you guys so much on that. Uh, and then lastly, we have Promote as well, uh, which again helps our clients in terms of uh, looking to enhance their presence online, they're looking for new client acquisitions themselves, 
Uh, so these are tools and resources that our clients has available to them to use uh, to help, again, make their business successful. All right. So next, we'll just go a little bit into preparing for a, a client and your prospects, right? So being, again, on, uh, on your client's path, is what you wanna is what you wanna look at at the end of the day, right? So uh, with our face to face that you're done uh, in terms of seeing clients, these are the the main things that in terms of how you're gonna meet clients. Uh, it's either going to be in branch, um, it's either going to be at their office, and it is mandatory to do a site visit for every deal that you finance for a client. So at the end of the day. Uh, any type of financing that you are putting forward for a client as a business account manager, it is going to be your responsibility to ensure that what you're financing is in fact legitimate. The location does in fact exist uh, because funny enough, you will find clients that will come to you and say that they're looking to open a business in a location. And if you have not done your homework with that client, it may be in fact that that location does not exist or there is nothing there when you drive by. So uh, as a business account manager, it is going to be your responsibility as well to ensure that when your clients come to you and they are requesting financing for starting a business, that that business is in fact legitimate, the location does exist and so forth. So site visits are always mandatory for us in our role um, and it is required before any financing uh, is put forward or advanced to our clients. In terms of technology and resources that we have available, uh, there is First Research, Scott's directory. Um, obviously, Google is fantastic when it comes to just looking up industry segments and so forth. And then um, there is also the client's website that you could go on uh, to find out information on. So uh, again, Scott's directory for us here in Canada um, has uh, an updated it's, it's very in-depth in terms of the information that you could get from it. So it provides uh, a list of companies as well as the industries. It would provide you with um, the, the segments even within that industry. Um, typically, uh, how, many, how many people are within that industry right now? How successful has that industry been? And so forth. So in terms of uh, you yourself as a business account manager, when you're financing different deals for clients, uh, it is a good source to use for yourself if you are looking for information um, on that specific industry. Same with uh, First Research, uh, Scott's directory I know a lot of clients tend to use as well. First Research would actually assist with finding industry profiles. Um, you could find statistics as well as analysis from, uh, from the leader in the business industry information. So these are fantastic resources that you will have at your fingertips as a business account manager to also help you be successful in your role. Again, uh, some of you guys might be new to Canada coming in and, and looking at these roles to get into. Uh, so these are the resources that you would want to want to keep at your fingertips because it's going to help you be successful and understand the different segments, markets, and the industries that we have here in Canada and um, all the all the things that you need to know and understand about it. All right. So um, that's just a little bit in terms of preparing for your clients um, and your prospect interactions. Uh, as we move into our, our next slide as well. So being on our client's path. So as mentioned before, it is a requirement that for every deal that's funded, a site visit is going to be mandatory. You need to, again, ensure that what your client is in fact requesting funding for is legitimate. We want to ensure as well that we are doing enough discovery with our clients to provide the best advice and the best possible solution to them. So in terms of your product offerings, um, and we have here on the screen validate the business itself, which is um, considered a government guarantee loan, also classified as a CSPFL. Um, through your discovery, you will then understand for your clients 
what type of loan is possibly needed, right? Um, and you want to make sure you have those those in depth conversations with them because for a brand new client that doesn't really have much net worth in place, uh, no equity really, and it comes to you and says, "Hey, I want to I want to open a business." Well you may not necessarily be able to help them because they still need some sort of equity to inject into the business. Uh, if it is a client is saying, well, hey, I might be able to put in 10% or, or that's as much as I can provide uh, in terms of starting your business, um, that would then lead you to uh, provide uh, your government guarantee loan, which is, uh, again, specific. Uh, again, through your discovery for clients that have larger amounts to put in as a down payment, you would then be able to facilitate through a term loan for them. So again, being on your client's path, you want to make sure at the end of the day that you're walking with them through these steps. You understand and you have a good understanding of their business, the changes that are happening what's going on with their cash flow uh, and then as you continue to do your yearly reviews with them uh, you yourself will will look at their financials to see what's changed year over year for them uh, if there is excess cash flow building up what can we do to help our clients be more successful at the end of the day you don't want to have your clients um, just sitting with uh, cash flow in their account that could possibly earn them interest uh, so these were, these are where, again, connecting with your clients and, and ensuring that you have a good, solid understanding of their business and the changes that are taking place within it uh, will help you provide them, again, with the best advice that you can. Again, being on your client's path and doing site visits, it allows you to be present in your community um, and just around the market so that clients and other businesses around know who you are. And, and what it is that, that you stand for and, and what it is that you can promote and help them with even within their business. Uh, so being on your client's path again is important for us um, and it's, it's key as well for, um, for really making the, helping your clients make the best decisions uh, for their business as well. Uh, to our next slide, so balancing credit risk, and it's always funny when I look at this slide, especially with an elephant trying to balance on a, a really bouncy ball that, in my opinion, could burst at any minute. Uh, but uh, again, it, it just shows the, the type of balance sometimes that you need to have in terms of how we manage risk here at RBC. So a big part of your job as a business account manager is to grow the loan and credit portfolio that you would have on your desk. But sometimes balancing the risk involved with lending money um, can be difficult. So we can achieve this balance, again, by mitigating RBC's credit risk for each client scenario. So uh, when it comes to business performance, management, security, and access to funds, these are the things that you're going to want to look at in terms of how to balance your risk out for, for your clients. So with your business performance, again, how, how well is the business performing, right? What, what are the financials for that business showing you as a business account manager? Um, what, are, what are the ratios looking at or looking like? So there are three key ratios that we look at um, as a business account manager for our clients within their business. Um, it's going to be your current ratio, which is a measure of, again, your assets to liabilities. Uh, and it shows liquidity within the business. There is your debt to tangible net worth ratio. So again, how much debt versus equity does a client have within the business? And then your debt servicing coverage ratio. That would again show us uh, for a client that's looking to take out an additional loan, uh, do they have the cash flow within the business to service this loan, right? So again, business performance, these are the things uh, that we want to look at and the financial analysis that's going to be required in terms of moving more in depth for your for your client uh, of um, of looking at your financials for them. Management um, again are the the principals or the directors are they experienced? Uh, how long have they been in business? How long have they been within that industry? So again, dealing with brand new clients um, that are on your desk and, and startups in particular, 
they may not, this is going to be their first business. So they may have industry experience, but they may not have experience as a business owner per se. Uh, and th again, this is where your advice as a business account manager will come in. Uh, and this is where events and hosting advice events to help these clients um, grow and be successful in terms of understanding what it takes to be a business owner, um, marketing or advertising or even using social media and different forums to, to promote your business and, and how that all works is going to be important. Um, security. So what type of security are they going to have in place for you in terms of financing a deal for them? Right. So do they have um, any cash on their personal side that they can fall back on that we can hold as collateral against uh, the loan that we're doing? Um, we, we would have to look at a general security agreement. So a general security agreement is normally required by for any type of business credit that we're doing or, or lending that we're doing that states at the end of the day that we as RBC will hold first ranking um, on the business. And God forbid a client defaulted on their credit facilities under the business, uh, we would still get paid out first. So your general security agreement is something that's always in place. Uh, sometimes it may also mean taking a personal guarantee from a client. A personal guarantee in, in this respect would mean that they are ensuring to us as a bank that whatever lending that we're doing even on the business side, God forbid, that something defaulted, um, they're personally guaranteeing for us with their personal net worth, their assets that they have in place, that it will still be repaid um, regardless. Uh, and then collateral mortgages. So sometimes you will have clients in two scenarios. It may be one where they're looking to lease a space uh, and leasing would be where they're renting a certain space for a, a period of, of years. Uh, it could be anywhere sometimes between two, five, 10 years, depending on, on their business. Uh, and in, in that respect, you're looking at, again, a personal guarantee or, or having certain agreements in place. Uh, your other scenario will be where they're looking to purchase the unit outright. Uh, and then we will hold that unit as collateral against um, the loan that we're financing for them. Lastly, for access to funds. So, again, um, in event of default, um, will the company be able to pay us back. So access to funds, we're going to look at for a client as, again, the personal side, what they have uh, in terms of a family, liquidity, investments, um, equity that's built up in their property, if any. Uh, these are all the main factors that we look at when it comes to financing a client uh, for their business. All right. So uh, on to the next slide. So in terms of, again, growing your portfolio, uh, we've, we've touched on this um, a few times already throughout this presentation. Uh, your partnering, partnering, partnering is, again, something that's really, really big for us within this organization. Uh, RBC and partnering, and in terms of internally, uh, again, as listed on the screen, you're going to be partnering internally with your branch and um Again, other internal partners such as private banking and Dominion Securities at RBC. So again, internally, these are your, your key partners that you will work with as a business account manager. Externally, and as mentioned as well, you are going to look at accountants, lawyers, realtors, um, third party lenders. So business development calendar is another one that we, we partner with a lot um, and they help uh, lend to clients based on if they if they need capital uh, or financing um, for for the business uh, and again your community organization so within your sphere of influence that you have and within your market that you're placed who are who are the organizations that's there and how can you connect with them to ensure that you are building relationships um, you're networking with the right people as well to establish um, uh, new relationships with new clients as well, right? So these are the things that you would look at. And then lastly, um, it would be cold calling. So your cold calling would be pro, more or less proactively um, looking for potential opportunities with clients that 
maybe maybe looking at opening a business right um it may also be um where you go out within your market and you do um door knocking or what we call at rbc shoe leathering so it may be going again to to businesses and and just chatting with them introducing who you are and, and what it is you do and, and seeing if there's any opportunities for uh, a new business relationship a new acquisition or or if we can help in any way provide them with advice Right. So again, those are, are the areas that you'd want to look at in terms of how we can grow um, your existing portfolio as well um, within within your role. All right. So last uh, last slide. So a BAM recruitment process um, normally takes place um, based on this. so. Your first, um, if, if it is any of you guys are looking at, at this role specifically to get into as a business account manager, um, your pre-screen conversation is going to be the, the first piece that's done. Um, sometimes, again, this is going to be a, a telephone call that takes place after, after your resume and so forth is submitted. Um, a recruiter will be in contact. You will have a conversation uh, tends to be around anywhere between 15 to 25 minutes, depending. Um, and then from there, um, again, they will go into discussion specifically about your role, what it entails and how open are you against the mobility aspect of it and, and so forth. Right. Um, from there, uh, again, you would go through a, a sales proposition. So how do you present yourself to clients and so forth? As I mentioned, personality is so important in this role, guys. Uh, I'm not even going to lie to you. You have to be that type of person where you, you naturally love interacting with people. You love meeting people. Um, and, and you're not shy in terms of going up and having conversations with, with people you're meeting. Um, that's the type of personality you need to have in this role in order to be successful. When you go to events, you need to be able to go up to strangers in that respect, in inverted commas, and introduce yourself and start having conversations, right? So um, that's the type of personality you want to have where you're a little bit more on the outgoing side and, and you enjoy, again, interacting with, with people. You enjoy building relationships, establishing relationships, and so forth. Um, uh, throughout that process, again, once you go through your pre-screening with a recruiter on the phone, you will have um, what's called a behavioral interview um, where they will test you uh, on certain skill sets and so forth. Um, your last one would be a panel interview. Your panel interview is normally done with, I believe, three managers. Um, there's going to be the recruiter, the business account, the business relationship manager for that specific region as well as sometimes the regional um, vice president for, for our market as well. That's normally present for that. Um, and once the, the panel interview tends to take about an hour to get through. And uh, again, if you are successful with any panel interview, um, you will be provided with an offer. In terms of process and how long this all takes, um, sometimes it could be a few months, depending, right? Um, it's, it's not always a, a quick one-step process where you apply and within two weeks, it's a done deal. Um, sometimes uh, within RBC as well, we're always looking ahead of time to uh, for when we need to fill certain gaps within the organization. So we may, in fact, look for um, opportunities and, and do job postings um, well, well in advance. Uh, so that's something to be aware of. Um, so again, the, the process and recruitment in terms of applying for, for, for roles, it could be where if someone is needed immediately and it's something that's on the spot and it's effective, it could be within a few weeks or a month. Uh, and then sometimes it could span out to sometimes two, two, three months, depending on, on, on where we are in, in our organization internally and, and what, what process is in place. Now, I know as well, some of you may have questions in terms of, you know, how does one get into a business account manager role, right? So what are the, the skills that are necessary to get into this and what do they look for specifically? So again, with a business account manager role, um, and I will tell you mandatory most times what, what are strong skill sets or a must have, 
uh, of what they would look for. Um, one would be uh, business development and client acquisition and prospecting skills. So again, that would include building and leveraging valuable centers of influence within the within your business community. Uh, it is it is somewhat of a business development manager role as well as a relationship manager because again, whatever market that you're placed in and your branches that you're assigned to work in, um, you are again developing a relationship within your community. So. We want to ensure that you've had exposure to that and you also have experience in that field of understanding what it takes to be a business development manager, understand what it takes to acquire new clients as well, and, and how have you done that in previous roles that you may have had exposure or experience in. All right. Prospecting skills, again, um, how are you in terms of uh, pr promoting yourself? Um, what's your value proposition? What's your pitch? Uh, and how, how effective have you been in sales roles uh, even in the past? This is essentially as well, it, it is sales. Um, uh, so it is considered a sales role. Your, your role again is to grow a portfolio as well as acquire and attract uh, new clients for yourself. Uh, so we also look for exceptional client relationship management uh, and then time management and communication and organization skills are really key and important um, to have for this type of role. Time management is big because there are so many components to it. There's so much stuff that you're going to be required to do. Um, again, internally uh, fostering uh, those relationships as well as externally as you build your market that you're assigned to. Uh, in terms of nice to haves and, and, and additional traits that would help, um, having good credit skills or knowledge of it. So, you know, having a good understanding of risk, risk assessments, uh, financial analysis, uh, your ability to understand financial statements, credit structuring and so forth. Um, those are really great skills to have um, that can really add in terms of, you know, putting you forward for that for that process of, of, um, of going through recruitment. Um, sometimes even having on, on our side going through other previous roles as well. So a relationship management role would be, you know, first having exposure experience to being a financial advisor um, within our branches because that's a more relationship managed. There is um, the associate account manager roles where you, as an associate account manager, you work under a commercial account manager. So you gain experience and knowledge in that you tend to help with more of the admin processes behind the scenes with your commercial account manager, but it gives you exposure again to business, business banking, or product solutions and so forth. And then again, having just a good knowledge or broad way of, of business and personal financial products and services. Uh, these are, are specifically the things that we would look for uh, in terms of getting into uh, a business account manager role. All right. So lastly, um, and on our last slide, I just want to say a huge thank you to you guys for spending an hour with me to listen to me talk about business account manager roles and, and what it is it offers at RBC. Hopefully I was able to answer most of most of what you guys would have wanted to ask already. Um, but if not, I would open the floor up to Sonia this time to allow you guys to to bring forth any questions specifically that you would have. Thank you so much, Alicia, for that very, very informative webinar. Um, <clears throat> Uh, people were asking questions throughout, but you kept answering them as you were talking. <laughs> so it was very detailed indeed. Um, I feel like uh, all the questions I've been reading are probably answered, but uh, because everyone does have questions, I, I, I think that I, we should address some of them. Right. Um, okay, so Ibrahim has a question here. He wants to know for small businesses, how do they get lending? Is it secured? Um, or they have to start with, or uh, do they have a balance sheet, a cash flow lending possible? So we are essentially cash flow lenders. So when it comes to businesses and financing them, we do look uh, with a startup business, uh, we will look at projected revenues. So all of the financing that you would do for a client would be based on those projected revenues. 
their expenses, and then the bottom line of their net profits. So when we run our financial worksheets, the lending and the financing that we're going to provide and put forward to them would be based on that uh, in terms of collateral and securities that we would then hold. Again, it would depend. So if they're looking to purchase a unit um, and they're financing that um, space, then we can hold that unit as collateral against that loan. Uh, if it is that they're leasing a space, um, yes, we can still hold uh, equipment, inventory, and so forth, um, but sometimes that's where a personal guarantee would also come into play for them. So we do have, those are the security measures that we would put in place and the collaterals that we would have to hold on file to ensure that um, at the end of the day, we are, are secure um, in terms of what, what funds we're advancing to them. Thank you, Alicia. Another question we have from Priya here is, um, have there been incidents where multiple account managers at RBC are contacting the same client? <laughs> um, it can happen, uh, and that's where um, contact strategy is important for us. So with our, our clients um, that are already on the desk or, or, or within a client within RBC, you would have access to see information in terms of who was la who last contacted that client. So that would kind of give you an understanding of if another business account manager has already been reaching out to that client and so forth. For new prospect clients that you may essentially just be cold calling, um, no, you may not be able to know that that information unless the client provides you to say, well, hey, you know, someone already contacted me. And then at that point, um, if they've already established a relationship, you don't want to step on anyone's toes within the organization. So, you know, you just thank them again for, for their business and you move forward to your next. Thank you. Uh, next question here is from Maha wants to know, do you need any licenses for this role? Actually, no, and, and that's a good thing um, with with this rule specifically. Um, we're not licensed um, to to do investments in terms of mutual fund lending and so forth. In past, yes, we were. However, um, as of maybe a year and more ago, we focus solely just on the business lending. At most, we would do business uh, like a guaranteed investment certificate for them under the business, but no licensing is required. No. Thank you. Um, I'm just going to go through this very quickly. Right. Yeah. Um, Adotia says, does RBC follow a proprietary model of credit assessment, uh, which makes the credit approval an objective process, or is it a subjective decision? Uh, honestly, it is case by case. Uh, every scenario and every client scenario is different, and I think that's where the fun in, this, in these types of roles come in. It's that... It, every client you see in every situation is so different. So a lot of times you are like a lawyer advocating a case on their behalf and you are looking at, at, at every situation individually and how best, based on that specific client situation, how best can you assess their risk and then how can you mitigate that risk to, for RBC to allow for lending. So it's not um, just a, a broad paintbrush that we use and, and we just say, hey, all clients are the same and, 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 and being objective in that respect. Um, every, every situation is going to be different. Um, so it is a case by case scenario most times with each client. Thank you. Um, Haley wants to know uh, how many business account managers is RBC recruiting within the next few months? Ooh, within the next few months, that's actually a good question. Um, I am not sure, honestly, where they are in that process. I know in terms of hiring um, right now, maybe about another 20 if we look at it across the markets, possibly, um, because every market is different. I know right now um, every team might have about 12 max 15 um 15 business account managers uh within within every market so depending on on where we are right now i know it's been um we are actually hiring more trainees coming november and december actually so yeah Thank in terms you. of number wise not too sure but we are going to be hiring again 
Perfect. Thank you so much. Um, we are at the end of our presentation. Uh, sorry, folks. I know that you there's still some questions, but I feel like you have answered uh, a lot of them during the presentation as well. Um, everyone, I'd like to thank you for attending. Alicia, do you have anything to say before I move on to the next slide? Um, again, just a huge thank you to Access Employment uh, and thank you so much to, to all of you guys that are online today and signed in to, to listen to our presentation. Hopefully I was able to answer most of your questions. Um, those of you that, that may still have additional questions that you want to ask as well, feel free. Uh, you can reach out to me via LinkedIn. I'm always available to answer um, any additional questions that you may have. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. Um, you can add us on uh, Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook. We are very active on our social media. Now we are currently on Instagram as well. So add us so you can stay posted of our upcoming events, whether they're in-house or they're at RBC or whether they're online. So check us out. And Alicia, I'd like to thank you very much again for um, participating and coming back. And uh, everyone joining us. Thanks again. We'll see you soon. Thank you, Alicia. Thank you. Take care, guys. Bye.